Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Join this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway, the people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza, the podcasters. Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter for AwesomeCast.net, and this is another episode of The Awesome Chat, our new interview show we're doing to find awesome people, and uh, as we're going to find out today, not just Pittsburgh-based, we're going to be talking about Clamor, a great app that's kind of sweeping the bloggers and podcasters out there in the tech world, on the app world, and we're going to be talking uh, about that today. But you can find out more at AwesomeCast.net. We're on all the social medias, AwesomeCast on the Twitters, on the great Facebook group. We have a lot of conversation going on there. Google Plus and the like. And you can subscribe to this and other shows, the mini awesome cast, the regular awesome cast. Uh, just a lot of great tech talk happening from people that are using this stuff um, over at awesomecast.net on YouTube, on uh, iTunes, on Spreaker, on Stitcher, where everywhere we can put your videos in your audios. You're even finding a little bit of us over on dailymotion.com. So please check us out and let us know what you think. Uh, uh, we're looking for, we just want to grow the conversation. And growing the conversation today, we have uh, from Clamor, Parviz Parviz. Easy joining us today. How you doing, sir? Hey, sir. Great to be here. Awesome. So, um, so you guys, uh, you know, I, 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 I you guys, I, I don't know. You, you came across me. I don't know how the connection happened. Um, but I, I got to be fortunate enough to be, I guess, an early adopter when I jumped on. And we have a Sorgatron Media account on there, and I've been experimenting with experimenting with this. And the opportunity to talk to you guys about this and answer some, maybe even some of my own questions here uh, would be, would, you know, I had to jump on the opportunity. Uh, so tell us, for people that haven't discovered it yet, you know, this is pretty new. Uh, what is Clamor? Yeah, so Clamor is a bite-sized audio platform. The user gets a continuous stream of personalized audio clips that are capped at 18 seconds. And each clip can also be expanded to something longer, like a full podcast, um, YouTube, or even leading to a web web page. So it's, it's a great way to get a power feed of information or entertainment. It's also a great way to discover new stuff. So you're kind of almost in a browse mode where you're listening to these 18 second clips and you say, oh, that's interesting. And then you dive in or you hit the save or like button and then you come back to it later. That's that's in a nutshell. There's a whole lot we'll talk about, but very Mm -hmm. condensed version, uh, bite sized audio platform. A lot of people are calling us audio Twitter or audio Instagram. Yeah. So where did you guys how did you guys come across the idea to do 18 seconds specifically? Yeah, so it's, it's interesting. If you look at um, a couple sources of data, uh, psychological research on the human working memory, which is short-term memory, um, base and, and really attention span, that where you see the research coming out is it's somewhere around seven to nine seconds. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you take Twitter and the 140 characters there and you translate that into the spoken word, which is typically you know, 150 words a minute for a lot of recorded sources, you get to somewhere around 10 seconds. So initially, when we were just in product development, we started off around 12, at 12 seconds, just to give a little bit of a buffer between the clamors. Um, and what we saw as feedback that we were getting was that folks tended to be kind of like rushing um, what they were saying and trying to squeeze a little more in. And so we then went and actually did something not super scientific, but we, we actually read a whole host of New York Times articles out loud and recorded them and then listened to them um, and then rated at what point we were able to understand the main point of the article, not just the topic, but what it was actually saying. And that ended up averaging out to 18 seconds. Um, so that's where we landed on the team where we said, if a well thought through source uh, can express what it's saying in 18 seconds, that's a pretty good benchmark for uh, deciding you know, what, what, what the right unit is for expressing a quick thought. Um, so that's how we landed at 18. It was a little bit of a process of triangulation. Awesome. So, uh, you know, and when I saw the pitch for it, it was uh, talking about, you know, kind of music discovery and also podcast discovery. So I really kind of jumped on that. For, for me, I was already kind of wrapping my head around opportunities for Instagram, for instance. Of course, uh, Twitter video, I think, was just rolling out. And it seemed to make sense. It's like, well, I'm already kind of trying to figure out a pipeline to take, you know, we talked about all the content I make around here for Sorgatron Media. You know, how, how, what do I, how do I take that to put samples out? 
you know, in other ways. And the 18 seconds, uh, you know, really kind of fit along with that because I'm looking at 15 and 30 respectively there. Um, what other, you know, for me, I'm just kind of taking all my shows since I have this network, putting at least a little kind of highlight snippet. And um, and and for me, it just links through to the, the full podcast. And and that's the, that that I think is a really cool part. And this is the thing that got me excited. And I think it's getting on podcasting excited for this because uh, you get in here. Oh, got to find the right camera. And you see my show. So like uh, last thing I had was a mini boss battle for Insert Coin. And hear my own voice and it pops up there and you have the option to just go through you can listen to the clips but you get to hear more and now they're listening to the podcast this does from what i understand count towards my own stats on if you're on libsyn or i'm on i'm just on talk Show myself or whatever uh other server so this is another outlet for people to consume my content basically michael yeah i mean my sword you're absolutely right it's um what we if we condensed some of what Clamor does as a, as a media format, mm-hmm. um, it really makes audio discoverable and social uh, in a new way. And when you look at, if you just look at broadly kind of the media landscape, there's been this trend toward bite-sized content. Mm-hmm. And every type of media has a bite-sized option. So text has Twitter. Images have Instagram. Video has Vine. But there's no bite-sized audio. Um, and what bite size does is it actually lets folks both discover things because everything's a snack size unit that you can jump into. And it also makes stuff much more shareable. So your experience really is in line with some of the your founding vision for what we saw clamor doing, right? Mm. Um, obviously somebody who knows you and knows how great your stuff is, is going to subscribe to your podcast, but there are a whole host of other people who haven't had exposure to you. And this is a way to get exposure, not just from being on Clamor and they bump into you, but the other really neat thing is all of these Clamors are open embeddable objects. So people can take those Clamors and share them out to Twitter, Facebook, SMS, email, and recipients don't have to have Clamor in order to listen to them, right? So you can just see something that somebody posted on Twitter or Facebook or when, sort of when you publish a clamor, you can actually simultaneously publish it to Twitter and Facebook at the same time. So it actually takes your content and what you're doing and maps it onto your own social graph and also your fans' social graphs, Mm -hmm. um, which, which is a great opportunity for them to start engaging with you in a new way. Definitely. And for us, you know, this is going to be a longer interview. A lot of our shows, you know, we started with a show that was two hours when we started 10 years ago. And we've always had to adapt that over the and it doesn't work in a YouTube generation. Right. Um, So that's why we're doing like I'm doing daily shows where we do under five minutes for each of the main, you know, talking video games, tech wrestling and uh, trying to fit that YouTube mold i guess and adapt what we're doing for that and hopefully being a new open door for this um and and i'm liking i'm liking this as an option the other cool thing uh, you talk about like different formats and i i didn't know about the auto tweets i know I, I think i missed an email there so uh, <laughs> but uh, uh the cool thing i saw you guys pop up with was if i can pull up the site here uh over on sagatronmedia.com i got to use your widget app which really kind of solved the thing because i got all this stuff here um, and i'm actually looking to rearrange to separate out some of the wrestling store stuff we're working on uh, re- reformatting indie wrestling.us. So I'm trying to kind of focus a little bit of what I'm doing. Um, but I also get now, it's like, oh, here's all the shows, but also, hey, here's snippets of the shows right on the right of our site, thanks to Clamor, right above all the subscribe buttons and everything. And you can go in and listen and, and check out, you know, several snippets of episodes or here right there in the browser it's not flash it's html5 it'll work across the board um and, and i think it just uh, creates another just another opportunity yeah absolutely the, the widgets are something folks have gotten really excited about um anybody can make a widget and you can make widgets in a few different ways one is you can have a widget tied to a single account um so that's great uh and then that widget will play everything that that account has published and everything that account also likes. So that account can act as a curator and like other stuff and that'll show up in the widget. You can also have channel level accounts. And so with a channel level account, that means a channel combines multiple uh, accounts. So a widget that's a channel widget, basically you could have a wrestling channel and then you could combine 
different accounts within Clamor that are talking about wrestling into that channel. Um, and then the third one, which is really cool, is, um, is actually a, a hashtag-based or search-based widget, which means that you can take a search term and one of the neat things in Clamor is if you search for any term, that generates basically a virtual channel against that term. So, for example, if you searched for Clinton, you would get every Clamor that mentions Clinton. Um, that could get dangerous. Clinton. That could get a little bit dangerous, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> we've seen, we've tried that and people are doing some fun stuff, um, interesting stuff. Uh, right, but you can then create a, this, this on-the-fly hashtag based widget which for example you might tell your fans to post some thought like hashtag wrestling moments and then your widget would just play anything they're posting um, you know in real time somebody could just log in and see where the conversation is going there without having to use the app it would just be on a website or anywhere else on tumblr you can embed it anywhere really mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One of the things that surprised me, because I mean, this is what, you know, I, I got the email. I was like, oh, what is this startup thing? You know, I, 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 nobody's going to be on this thing. And then I was really amazed. Um, and then another thing that really kind of talked me into it uh, in my own head conversation was uh, I popped on here and saw some brands were already on board. Like, I think I saw TechCrunch, Twit was already a part of it. And then, no, they're not. I, that I, I listened to a lot of Twit uh, this week in tech. <laughs> so, and, and I hadn't heard it come up yet. But somebody there was doing something. They had clips in there. I look like snippets of their shows. Sometimes there there are, I think I see NPR is doing, aren't they doing, like, um, it feels like there's some some content, like, hey, here's a headline, and here's news on this. And it goes to a, another thing. Uh, I, you know, how, how did you guys drum up? So, so, one, how long have you guys been around? Uh, and and how did you guys drum up the, such big support on some of the bigger uh, news sources uh, so early? So we've done. There are actually a few things in there going on. We we've really launched to the public, um, literally this past couple of weeks, starting with NMX. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we were in the iOS store this winter, and we had a password wall um, just to be able to grow out of the kind of test flight limitations. But we had a password wall up there and we were being pretty quiet. We were on Twitter. We were doing some direct email outreach just to build things up. Um, and then really have come out in the past couple weeks. So you're very much an early adopter. Um, one of the neat things about Clamor, some of what you see that, you know, brings in things from different brands, et cetera, is, um, super fans of shows can actually go and create Clamors themselves. So there's a whole clamor creation aspect to clamor where you can grab a clamor out of any podcast that's on your phone, out of anything that's on SoundCloud, and also things that you record yourself um, or just happen to have on your phone as files. Uh, so some of some of the stuff you hear is actually people who are fans, and we found kind of super fans to say, you know, I actually love this podcast. I'd love to share highlights of this thing. Um, and that's another way where you can get a really interesting megaphone from your audience who haven't really had a way to share the stuff they like about you um, out on your behalf. Um, and everything that gets created has a link back. So you know, somebody might clamor your show, but that'll automatically have a hear more button associated with it. And so a listener we hear something great from Sword actually can then press that hear more button. We, we basically suck in all the metadata okay. from uh, the podcast and also from SoundCloud uh, that's associated with everything. That's interesting. I, and that's been, um, uh, if I've had any complaint, it's been like, I get all these likes, I get these follows, and I can't figure out a way to interact back with them, at least via your app at this point. But I, I didn't know about like, that kind of reclipping feature and everything. Uh, that's very interesting. So, uh, so I should start sharing some of my friends that I like. So, uh, certainly, uh, but, uh, it, that's, that's really cool. Um, um, so well, one other thing I'll add in there sort sure. of is, um, one thing that's pretty neat that we're starting to see is, um, is the use of multi-tracking. So Clamor has multi-tracking yeah. and what that means is you can pull in a clip and then you can put other things on top of it. Uh, and we just released a feature called remix where you can actually make a Clamor out of an existing Clamor. Right, so somebody in music, somebody might throw down some beats, um, and then somebody also just throw some lyrics down on top of it. They'll remix the beats clamor, and then they'll they'll throw their lyrics on top of it, or they'll remix a couple things on top of each other. So there's a lot of opportunity for collaborative creation, um, where you might throw something out, or you might say something on your show, and a fan 
makes a clamor out of that, but also adds their own voice intro to it and says, yeah, this is a great, hilarious moment for more. Sword, check it out. Um, well, this is awesome. I didn't realize this is a full multi-track uh, multi-track kind of editor in here this is crazy so i just pulled in real quick you guys have some sound effects in here and i just mm-hmm. recorded just a real just just a quick track and uh i know one thing i've been trying to do again trying to find that interaction and, and i have been really bad about it but i wanted to kind of check in and do a daily check-in of like hey this is what we're working on today yeah. and uh I, I didn't know i could uh, so so what i need to do now is let, load some sound effects in here to intro outro that thing and make yeah. it a little more kind of spruced out huh and, and you guys do have a lot like it looks like I, like we talked about you can bring in actually Actually, right in the app. I, I, does this link to the podcast app in iTunes, in, in iTunes that's in, in, on the phone already? That's what it links to, exactly. That purple podcast app. Mm-hmm. Any app that you've downloaded in there, mm-hmm. you can pull it. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, and, and of course, uh, there's a uh, SoundCloud hooks in here. There's your music. So if you have anything in your music library, um, sounds that they have. There's a, And you guys all, actually already have built in beats too, huh? Yeah. We did a bunch of beats. There are a lot of rap beats um, and other styles too. And there are some basic sounds like you know laughter and newsroom mm-hmm. one leany thing that literally is hot off the press is um we consolidated a channel called sounds um and so you could add that to your home feed the way you just do that is on your home page in clamor you just scroll to the bottom and hit add channel and you'll see one of the tiles that you can add is called sounds and that actually is all kinds of sounds that different users have put in to clamor things like Mostly a lot of funny stuff like famous memes, um, famous internet memes, etc. It should be maybe closer to the top if I'm looking at your screen there. Do um, you see something? There? It's called. It's kind of aqua or bluish. It's called sounds. Mm. Top tweets, shouts, and murmurs. I got shouts and murmurs. <laughs> That's a fun one, though. That's a really fun one. Um, See, keep, keep going. See if uh, it should be there. I may have accidentally added it already. Actually, you, might have, <laughs> you never know. Uh, it'll be grayed out because there are no images in there. Mm-hmm. Um, if it sounds so, that's a that that has a ton of kind of stock sounds, and you can remix any of those. So you can play them, and then to remix, you just hit the arrow button that's next to thumbs up, and you can throw that onto your soundboard. So we're seeing some folks already starting to do some fun audio postcards where. Yes. You know, you might have an image and then a funny audio loop behind it. Um, I don't know if you remember that site called YouTheManNowDog.com. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, right? That thing was pretty ridiculous and hilarious. Um, so we, we see some people starting to do some of that because basically you can just take a picture and then add one of these sounds and, you know, find your own sound too. But there are a lot of pretty well-known sounds in that channel that everybody will recognize. And just start doing some funny stuff. Like I did one where, you know, I got a picture of, a, I think, a, a fox hunt with some dogs. And I did a, you know, who let the dogs out. A um, little audio loop behind it. It was just mm. fun to kick around, you know. So that's interesting. So, so it's a you know one. You have way more functionality than even I had discovered yet. Uh, but you're finding you know much like Vine, people are figuring out how to well, how do I fit this in? How do I tell the story in six seconds on this platform with just my phone, right? So you guys are kind of uh, having this new kind of radio lab thing happening, right? Where people are kind of uh, being creative within 18, 18 seconds within restrictions of this device, but you guys are giving them a lot of access to a lot of stuff just on an iPhone. Um, that's that's, that's that's cool. Yeah. yeah, it's been really fun just to see what folks are doing. I mean, you know, the most obvious use case that somebody who just looks at Clamor sees would be the power key. And there are a number of people who literally don't know about any of this stuff, and they just press the news tile or the tech news tile, and then while they're making their coffee, they basically get a super targeted power feed of news and, and other content and they're way more informed um and that's that's kind of like all this kind of stuff that's going on in the background with people messing around with multi-tracking and doing fun stuff they're not even aware of that and they get a lot of value from camera but we also wanted to make this a platform where people can really express themselves in new ways do some really interesting stuff with audio um there's also a messaging feature in there we haven't had that hidden because we've been testing it but um you talked about wanting more interactivity. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one way that you can um, engage a little more with, with folks. Basically, if you're seeing people producing content that you like, send them a message in Clamor 
And that's a way to start building up some communities. Those will be the most active people. Um, you know, there are a number of people who simply listen and, and are pure listeners. But um, the messaging feature works where you hit the share arrow um, next to the thumbs up, and then you choose clamor among the share options, and that'll generate a, a message window. I can actually, you know what, if we're doing this in real time, maybe I'll send you a, uh, a message. Okay. <laughs> See, see how that goes. Uh, let's see. Live tech, tech demos. Yes, exactly. All right. I'm going to do something meta, which is message you back your own clamor. All right. Well, let's see. You should get what you should get is a notification at the upper left of your screen. Okay, yeah, I got a little uh, one popped up there, and uh, the, so we're going to click on that guy, a little hamburger icon, and yeah. uh, and he says, uh, you shared uh, Delilah Doom, that was a great interview we did, did with her, she's uh, one year, and there it is, boom, okay. Yeah. So you kind of throw clamors back and forth, and that just generates an automatic chat string. Mm -hmm. We're doing a bunch around interactivity coming up soon, um, so it's definitely... Your, your point earlier, it's definitely on our radar screens. Yeah, and that, that's the thing. Like when I I, I, I kind of posed the question, you know, anybody had any questions about Clamor, especially on some of the the Google Plus groups that I that I frequent, uh, where this has been a conversation. And uh, what I got was feature wish list. <laughs> oh yeah, I want to see that. Okay, great. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll tag you in the post, like like stuff like, uh, hey, is there going to be more inter interaction? And somebody was asking, you know, are you going to be able to bring podcasts in from other podcast apps? Say, you know, I, I think the biggest thing because you know, this is, you know, I'm, this is an ongoing conversation. But uh, I, uh, if I can ask, why I iPhones first or iOS first, and uh, it, it, well, how far out is Android in, in the future, or, or are you guys still kind of want to make sure iPhone is right before you move on? Yeah, um, so we we love Android. Um, it, it, it really came down to a matter of resources and time, where we said, let's get the experience right on one platform, and then replicate from there, uh, rather than spreading ourselves out across multiple platforms. And, and the why iOS was, you know, iOS has more device unity um, than right. Android, where there's just a lot of heterogeneity. So it felt easier to develop really around a limited set of devices that have some consistency around them. Um, where, we're, where we're going now is we're building out our web version. That's the first step um, after iOS. That'll happen in the next month or two. Right now we have a publisher portal where you can get a basic listening experience if you're Android. Uh, you can you get tiles that represent channels and you can press them, but you don't have any of the social features like no. liking and sharing, et cetera. And then you can upload content as a publisher and do more advanced stuff like scheduling. So we're going to build that out to bring it on a par with the app, and that'll be mobile responsive. And then we'll do Android after that, for sure. Uh, that, that was kind of the thinking on Android. Now, you also mentioned, uh, you know, one of the questions people asked around sharing from other apps. Um, we actually, with our most recent release, which is about six days ago, had something really cool, which um, you would never know is there. Uh, to quietly bring it out, which is you can actually import songs or any audio uh, from other apps on your iOS device. And for example, if you have anything on Dropbox, you can actually send that to your Clamor and put it on message board. Oh, so you like when you do the share, it'll pop up. Like Clamor will a uh, actually pop up as a selection, and it'll just pop right in there. Yeah, so it'll actually be in, in the specific case of Dropbox. It, what what you do is yeah, you hit that share uh, button, and then you'll get. I'm going to just pull it up real quick. Something that let's see. There's something that says other apps, um, open in, sorry, the open in icon. I'm going to, uh, let me shoot, let me figure out a way to shoot this over to you. I unfortunately have no audio in my Dropbox that I can demonstrate anything with, so. <laughs> uh, well, I just sent you um, something, just so you have a screenshot, um, mm -hmm. and, and you get a feel for that. Uh, the other, another neat trick is if you record anything in your voice memo, 
um, you know, just your normal voice memo app in the iPhone, you can email that to yourself. And any audio file you have in email, you just long press it, and then you can add that into Clamor as well. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Doing some technical things on the back end. <laughs> so, um, but uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. So, and also, I've heard the um, the audio, um, like working with the audio on, on the iPhone device is a little cleaner because I, I, I've seen other apps where they say, yeah, we're probably not doing Android because the audio architecture doesn't work quite as well. There's some of that and there's just some of the consistency with, uh, you know, just for example, the podcasts, right? And, and being able to, pull in all the metadata. It's just a, a little more integrated. Um, Android is great for having a lot of customizability. Um, that, that's one of the awesome things about Android. But for just getting started, you, know, if you have to make a choice. In our case, it just made sense to start with iOS. Mm -hmm. So uh, if, if I can uh, attack the feature list that has left on me, and that's actually yeah, on the... Uh, going. I love hearing that. Yeah. That's actually on the Podcasters Group Therapy uh, group on uh, Google+. Plus. They have a great uh, another uh, podcast called Podcasters Group Therapy, and they actually cool. do a Hangout every Monday. I always miss it because I'm doing the Hangouts and the tweets for uh, Monday Night Raw for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Um, but I know Crystal, who I'll be talking with uh, at Evening of Pod Camp here in a few weeks, uh, she's the one that uh, kind of turned me on to that, and she's very involved too uh, with it with um Lipson and everything podcasters group therapy mm -hmm. so I, I know i think they brought it up when they, they talked about it when they were doing live from NM, nmx and that was actually uh the owner of the group uh cory down there that had the question about the uh pulling from other other apps and he says like pocket cast for instance but but actually that would probably uh work out for that um uh, google plus uh, well, a lot of people ask about google plus and tumblr um uh, are you guys adding any more social media uh kind of outlets for that because it, it all has to be um, everything that's popular has to be in the plan right yeah yeah so. <laughs> and, and there are some basic things that make some of those sources accessible so for example with tumblr mm -hmm. you can make a widget out of anything in plan and right. so you can actually embed, and we have just a simple embed website. Um, you don't have to even have a login to get access to it. And you can generate widgets from that and stick them on Tumblr um, you know, today, which is great. And then sharing out to Google+, Plus, yeah, that's, that's on, the, on the list for sure. Awesome. Stats. Have to talk yeah. stats. I remember podcasters, podcasters are nuts about stats. I notice I get... I get I get a mark every time. I get a notification every time one of my uh, 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 clamors uh, is clamor the verb here. Is clamor the <laughs> is clamor the tweet of this uh, application? First of all, well, is this we've been using that? But you know, we um, we want to see what everybody else comes up with. We, with language, <laughs> language is an always evolving thing. So uh, you know, the community may start using verbs and nouns that we didn't think of, and then mm -hmm. that'll just become the norm. But yeah, we're 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 saying. Clamoring, uh, you know, as a verb. We're clamoring. That's that's great. That's great. Um, so so I get a notification when it's like uh, ten, or I've met two hundred plays. So I got a big yeah. gap in there, but I'm really excited when it goes two hundreds. But um, but I, but but there's not much for me, and I have the same problem with Facebook because I don't have a place where I'm like, how are my videos doing? Right? How are my clamors doing? Period. Here, like I, you know, a nice look. Here it is. You right. Mm -hmm. um, well, any for any given clamor, you you know this, but I'll say this for your, for folks who are listening who are new. Any given clamor will show the number of plays and likes. Mm -hmm. uh, you simply play it and then go to the full screen view, the now playing view, and it shows a number of likes and plays against that. So that's informative. Now you're you're, you're different than than a normal user in that you're really producing a lot of. A lot of content and a lot of different content. So you'd love to roll things up. You're a media company. You'd right. love to roll things up and see, okay, well, broadly, how am I doing? Um, that's something that we don't have right now, but we, we obviously are working on that. That's something that's important because people who are putting stuff up, yeah, that's just, that's just part of this landscape now for people who are really independent media companies and larger media companies. They need some of that data. So it's we definitely hear it loud and clear. We love what Twitter does with its analytics, um, you know, and it kind of exposes a lot of that within the app and on the website. Um, and so we'll get there. You're, you're answering questions as I'm reading them on the, one of these posts here, actually. <laughs> um, somebody had a 
big one. Um, but yeah, you it, it, and even like uh, it sounds like you guys have already addressed and again, it's just discovery. Like somebody's like, hey, you know, uh, what, uh, sh- where to share share these, um, uh, you know, just uh, across social media and everything. I don't think people know that you know a lot of those are out there. So, um, so just just on that one again for folks who may mm-hmm. be listening, it's when you're in the play mode that the full play screen for Clamor, just hit that arrow that's next to thumbs up and you'll see a whole bunch of sharing options. And everything in Clamor plays natively in Twitter and Facebook on the web versions. Mm-hmm. So it'll show off as a big picture with a giant play button on it and all the captions and whatnot. You, know, you talked about some of the inventive things happening. We talked about some of the early adopters. Who, who's really hitting? Like, what what is Clamor? Um, who's getting the best advantage? You think of Clamor right now? Who's really kind of becoming uh, the top kind of guys uh, doing this? Now, I know typically when it comes to podcasts, it comes to other things. The tech companies, the tech news shows come first. This week in tech is a perfect example of that, right? Yeah. Um, because I'm mean, well, the tech people, the audience is already there, right? Uh, yeah. But is there anything else? Anything inventive? Anything different that that you're seeing kind of pop up? Any stuff that surprised you well um it, it's not a surprise per se but it's great to see which is music has been popular really popular among independent musicians and their fans just hopping on clamor and throwing stuff up um, experimental stuff pre-releases which is which have been really neat uh folks just saying hey i'm about to drop an album here's a little teaser and i think for musicians especially emerging ones they face the same challenge that you know some podcasters do, which is they have great stuff. If you hear their stuff, you'd love it, but it's a heavy lift to go access a whole song or even find it. But uh, a little clamor sized portion, you can pretty easily grab. Mm-hmm. So we've seen a ton of activity around music and, and from musicians. Um, that's been one big one. The other one that's just really early, uh, but we're excited about, I mentioned that, you know, you the man now dog.com is some of this behavior around silly memes and doing fun stuff. Like, you know, one example is um, there was a, and people can do some really creative things. Like one, there's a news story about Hillary Clinton wanting to announce that she's running for president just that weekend that she was going to, she announced. So somebody went and found the Imperial March Darth Vader music from SoundCloud. And they took that news story from NPR, or I forget what the source was. And then they, added that soundtrack from the Imperial March and then they, you know, Googled a photo of her as Darth Vader and they put <laughs> that as the image. Um, and so this is just, that becomes its own new little thing, right? It takes this news story, straight news story, and it adds this editorial layer to it. So there's been interesting kind of people messing around with memes and creating clamor audio postcards, basically. Mm-hmm. This is surprising. I'm actually kind of uh, digging around a little bit here, and I'm noticing they're popular. I'm noticing a lot of comedians. Jerry Seinfeld, Louis C.K., Zach Galifianakis. Has is, is there yeah. been a big flux in that? There is. Comedy, you know, we, any comedy that we've had is really popular, and that's something that people always ask us, hey, can you get more comedians on here? Um, we, we've seen it do really well. The volume of the comedy is still more limited. Uh, it's just a community that we're trying to figure out the best way to kind of reach out to in, in a big way. Like with, with podcasting, being in NMX made a really big difference for us. We got to really meet a whole host of folks in the community and then word of mouth kind of spreads. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're still figuring out for comedy what are those those little nodes where everybody's meeting uh, or, or the sources of kind of getting the word out and influencing. So it's been more organic. Is Nerdist on here? They really need to be on here. Is somebody, is somebody contacted Chris Hardwick. <laughs> there is somebody putting up. There is somebody putting up a bunch of Nerdist stuff. If you nice. search for Nerdist, it's that kind of outtakes and stuff, and it's great. Um, it's it's really great in the sense that, especially for podcasts, you're, you always have a core audience, but there there are going to be people who are going to like certain episodes or like certain segments, and it starts bringing those people into the fold as well, instead of just having to be hardcore fans who are going to subscribe to podcasts. Um, you know, a lot of look at YouTube, you could argue that um, vice, in, both, in both directions, a lot of The Daily Show was built on the back of YouTube, sharing some of the clips, um, or people sharing some of the clips on YouTube, and vice versa. I think a lot of YouTube was built on people going there to check out great stuff from The Daily Show. Um, and then they started saying, wait a minute, this show I actually want to watch um, over time as well. Awesome. And do you find, uh, is it, 
Does it seem like it's 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 a it seems like more sharing stuff seems to, to be more popular than original content. Is is that does that seem accurate? Because I know like me, I'm I'm just doing clips, and this is a conversation I had over on Pittsburgh Bloggers on Facebook. Uh, I know Elsie over Elsie Escobar over there uh, for I think she's still with Lips, and she's talking about you know making you know original stuff for it and like i said i've been kind of playing around with uh kind of having my own kind of like hey guys this is what's up you know check this stuff out you know kind of thing uh what what are you what are you between the two of those what are you seeing kind of hating more uh definitely the sharing is taking off more uh mm-hmm. as people either simply sharing something they like or using that as a starting point for adding some of their own editorial voice or doing something funny with it mm-hmm. um it, it, a lot of that creation that we just went through using the soundboard, the remixing, et cetera, just gives people an opportunity. You know, there, you know, a lot of folks may not be able to think of an entire de novo um, you know, unit of content, right? And that they'll and put together a great voice, et cetera. But they may see or hear something interesting and say, you know what, I'm going to grab that and play a curator role. So there's a, we sort of, we've always thought of the world in three types, which is there are creators, there are curators, and then there are uh, you know, early consumers. And that curator as a creator is is really an interesting role, and it's definitely the bigger one, where people are expressing themselves by what they choose to share, and taking stuff to share, and just adding their own little twist of editorial voice to it. Awesome. What's next for Clamor? I guess we talked a little bit about the wish list, what we hope to help and happen in the next couple of uh, months, hopefully, uh, and, and of course the feature list. But uh, but what else is coming up? What, what, what's on the horizon that people can look forward to uh, from this application and, and what you guys are doing? Yeah, so we're we're primarily focused on just creating something awesome that people want to use. So a lot of it is just being really responsive to the community. Um, but a couple things you guys can look out for is definitely some enhanced community features. Um, so keep an eye out for that. I won't say more, but um, an ability to really interact a whole lot more on Clamor. We've heard folks loud and clear on that. Um, second thing is uh, certainly the void of the, uh, the web piece uh, and, and bringing that up to snuff with the app and then launching that. Uh, so those are a couple things that are on the radar. And then, you know, obviously just as folks grow and, more people come on, um, you know, some, some additional ways to categorize and, and manage your, um, your feed and things like that. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, I, I want to kind of turn a version of a question we do for the wrestling show. Uh, since you are an app maker, you are consuming audio. Uh, uh, I, have, I have maybe two separate questions for you right now. What new apps are exciting you? If you're allowed to talk, I don't know if, as a company if you're allowed to say. Uh, and and uh, are there any podcasts or anything uh, that you're listening to these days? Oh my gosh! So um, on apps, uh, <laughs> I just I go through so many. Um, you know, I've been I've been enjoying some of the kind of meme making apps. Those aren't particularly new, mm-hmm. but I've been I've been enjoying them more because I've been trying to get my head around some of what uh, what, what what Clamor can do. Uh, then there's just stuff that uh, you know is from friends. So uh, yeah, it, this this is a bit of a cheat, but there's a there's a great app called um, Ola Health that I've been playing with a friend of mine um, helped start. And it's kind of, they, everyone's a something for something. So they're like a yik yak for health. Um, and so they're convening these communities to discuss health topics um, in real time. And, it, and you can kind of geographically restrict it. And that's been just kind of fascinating to check out. Um, a lot of it's more about people who have certain conditions that you can go ask questions to, um, like there are on online boards. But the fact that it's mobile uh, just kind of makes it a little more accessible. Um, that, that's been just a fun one that I've been playing with. And on the podcasts, and I'm obviously a huge audio consumer. I basically don't read. I, I consume a lot of audio books. Um, one of the neat things about Clamor is just um, the diversity of of, um, of of podcasts that I've been able to access that I just might not have heard of or known of. Um, you know, they're, they're niche things. Like, for example, you know, Jock and Nerd or Mother. Um, and you know, those are those mothers about mothers. Um, and that's a podcast just about the topic of mothers. It's not a mommy podcast, right? So it's not saying, hey, here's some tips, but it's taking mothers and exploring all facets of them. Um, and Jock and Nerd is about comic books. Those are things I might have heard of, but 
first of all, they have such great um, posts that you actually just kind of like almost like click and clack. If you just want to, uh, from Car Talk, you just want to listen to them because they're great. Um, and so I've been, I've been really diving into a bunch of niche stuff that uh, wouldn't have maybe been in some of my topics of interest. Um, you know, something like Kindle Chronicles, right, with Glenn Edgerly. That's actually a great news interview, a great interview show, aside from any interest in Kindles or not. Um, and, you know, I have the classics that I always kind of listen to, things like Radio Lab, Freakonomics, things like that. Um, but I find myself through Clamor diving into things that, uh, you know, call your girlfriend. That's oriented toward women. But I find it hilarious. They're making all these great pop cultural references in there. Um, and it's just really fun to dive into and listen to. So I've been kind of just exploring the world of all podcasts um, in 18 Second Bites and then randomly diving in. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so go check it out. It's uh, clamor.com. Did I get that right? Is that? C-L-A-M-M-R, no vowel at the end. And very, yeah. very, yeah, the, the, yes, we're we're back to the web 2.0-y. We're just going to delete some vowels. <laughs> Either that or some guy had clamor, the full spelling, you know, was, was basically parking that domain, so. Awesome, awesome. Um, but I, I'm surprised I haven't seen a joke about that on Silicon Valley yet. But uh, <laughs> awesome. Hey, are you watching Silicon Valley? You know, it's funny. I just saw the first episode like three weeks ago. Somebody said, you should sit down, you should watch this. Um, you know, it just seemed a little too snake eating its tail for me to watch uh, a show about startups. But it was great. Uh, so I'm going to try to do a little binge watch at some point. So. That's what I hear. I hear it's like The Office, as in, yeah, that's how it is. You know, like I hear they're fairly accurate in their in their portrayals there, and to the point where I guess if you're into the whole San Francisco Silicon Valley startup you scene, I think it's like voice actors. If you know what that voice actor looks like, you're gonna be excited by the people that pop up. And so we're like, I know that guy from that company, or that's a Google guy that nobody else would know, or something like that. And it's been it's been pretty entertaining. So far. I'm loving it myself. So it's great. All right. Uh, so clamor.com. Check out where, where can follow p- people follow you on Twitter and send you the. <laughs> feature list themselves so yeah um follow us on clamor at clamor app um i'm basically you know one of the wizard of oz people there so uh so i'll personally <laughs> be looking at any tweets you said um we're just getting our instagram presence going too and there's a feedback button inside clamor again um you know i'll literally personally read that uh, with the other founders so um it comes to us there you go there you go. Get in on the ground floor. Check out Clamor. We've been having a lot of fun having great responses here with Sorgatron Media with it. And uh, check out everything else going on, awesomecast.net. We've had great talks in the past, past few weeks. Our first one, of course, with Yajagoff, uh, John Chamberlain joining us, a prolific blogger here in the Pittsburgh area, and, of course, TEDx Pittsburgh. Uh, if you haven't, I'm sure there won't be tickets by the time you're hearing this one, but you could definitely check out the streaming uh, live uh, coming up here. I think it's April 23rd, whatever that Saturday is around there. Uh, uh, they got a lot of great, great speakers going there. And you can check out this and other shows, uh, SorgatronMedia.com. So much going on. I added up everything I did from this week, not counting the multiple daily shows. We have like 15 items released this week. We got a lot going on. Follow wow. it. Uh, uh, tell your friends. We're gonna we're, we're making this big. You know, This is one of the big additions that we're doing with this, and we're having a lot of fun doing it. I'm at Sorgatron on Twitter, at AwesomeCast, and AwesomeCast on all the social medias. Subscribe to everything on iTunes, YouTube, wherever it is. Comment. What do you think of Clamor? You know, you have any questions about it? You have any suspicions about it? You have any questions? You know, how am I going to use Clamor? I, I've been having some great conversations with people. And join the Sorgatron Media Creative Newsletter. Uh, I've been having a lot of conversation about how I'm using it on there as well. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, Harvis, for joining us. And uh, and and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Uh, he's been our awesome guest. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. <laughs>